guys. This is Miss Donahue, and it is November the 13th. I am going to be working on going over last Friday's test. Now, last Friday's test was a 100-pointer, and I'm going to go through the whole thing showing some keywords and things what I'm doing is I am offering students to retake this test um, next Monday, November the uh, 19th, I think is what it is, and they can retake it even if they make a, even if they made like an 80, they could make a 90 next time. Like I will take the highest test score, whatever their best test score is. Um, so any kid can retake it if they wish. Now vocab was one of the biggest missed things, and they were three points each. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go through through them. The first one, a term without a variable, otherwise known as a number, is a constant. Just any number is a constant. We had these exact definitions on the study guide. Okay, each number, variable, or number with a variable in a sentence. So each little group is called a term because it's the number, the variable, or number with a variable. So if it's like 2x, it's a term. Okay, when you evaluate, you're finding the value of an algebraic expression by replacing variables with numbers. Notice, value and evaluate. Okay, we studied properties. Properties are statements that are true for any number. So we talked about like x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus x, that identity property. Okay, like terms. Terms, notice that, that contain the same variable to the same power. Like terms. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're fine. Okay, a mathematical language is algebra. It is a mathematical language of symbols including variables. We talked a bunch about, you know, it's going to have pluses and minuses. It's going to have letters. Okay. A variable. is a symbol, usually a letter. There's the key to that. Variable is a letter used to represent a number. And the last one there, an algebraic expression. The key was, I kept telling the kids, no equal signs. No equal signs. It has the variables, the numbers, the operations, but expressions don't have equal signs. Okay, so the next thing is, now we had to evaluate the expressions. Guys, on this, the study guide looked just like the test. I love you guys, but it looked just like the test. Here were your values, what we needed to put down here. Okay, so where it said 35 plus X, if X is 8, then we put an 8 right here. We copy the rest of the problem. And then our final answer was 43. That one most kids got right. I'll admit, this one a lot of you guys missed. you got to remember that X up against Y means X times Y. So when you write this out, if X is 8 and Y is 3 and Z is 2, 
That is the math. It's not 83, it's 8 times 3. Now, order of operation says, um, PEMDAS, you use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and we're going to do multiply or divide from left to right. So you should be doing multiply, divide, multiply, divide, multiply, divide. You would do that first. So 8 times 3 is 24. Bring down the divided by 2, and you get 12. And you should have shown all steps and all written out. Okay, on number 11. The first step would be to find what y is. y is 3. 3 squared, like I'm copying that 2, plus x times z. x is 8, z is 2. So, with order of operations, we should do exponents first. 3 squared is 3 times 3. Not 3 times 2, it is that number twice. 3 times 3 is 9. Bring down the rest of the math problem. Now we should do 8 times 2. 8, like we have to do multiply, divide before we can ever do add or subtract. So 8 times 2 is 16 plus the 9 would be 25. And I should see every step. In each step of the math problem, step 1 is to fill in all the variables. Step 2 is to show one step at a time so you get to that answer. Okay, so going to number 12 here. X is 8 divided by Z is 2 times 5. Okay, now it is multiply or divide from left to right. That means I have to do 8 divided by 2 first, which is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. And on this one, okay, fill it in the variables. You have 4, my Y is 3, Okay, start now. You can do it with parentheses. 3 minus 3 is 0. But here's what got a lot of you. That means 0 times 4. That is multiplied. It's not 40, and you can't just leave it. Like, you have to multiply. 0 times 4 is 0. Plus 8 is 8. That was the step that most of you missed. Okay. We will do the same styles of problems with different letters and different numbers. Okay. On the next part, this is where we had to define a variable and write an algebraic expression. Okay, so first, we have to figure out what our variable is. It says, Miss Willis bought five fewer pizzas than Miss Donahue. So, um, what we don't know is the pizzas that Donahue bought. Listen, when you define a variable, I need a letter, an equal sign, and what it stands for. Okay. Now, my expression is, if it says five fewer pizzas than the pizzas that Miss Donahue bought, I'm going to start with the pizzas that Miss Donahue bought and take away five. Here is the key to this. The P has to be in front. You start with pizzas before you can ever take away five. This word then. It helps us to know that whatever is here should be on the end of this thing. And whatever is here should be in the front. It makes the sentence kind of flip-flop. 
But with subtraction, you always got to start with something before you can take away anything. Okay, Miss Carter walked one mile less than three times the amount Miss Steele walked. Okay, so my variable, um, I would make it, I don't know, S for steel. You could make it how far steel walked. As long as you have a letter equals a word, you're good to go. Okay, now. Starting out, we see the word then this time, our magic word. Okay. We kind of start out with this end writing it because we want it in the front. Three times the amount Miss Steele walked. That means 3S. Three times it. Three times S. Now, on the back end of it, Miss Carter walked one mile less than that. So one mile less than that would be minus one. So you have to start with a number before you can ever take away one. Okay, number 16. Lindsay has eight more stickers than Whitney. Let W represent the number of stickers that Whitney has. Which expression represents the number of stickers Lindsay has? Right here is the key word, eight more stickers than Whitney. So if you start with Whitney, there's your magic word then. So that's why my W is in front for Whitney. Eight more than means plus eight. It is the letter B. Eight more than, you're adding eight. Okay, these were each two points, these were each two points, this was four points, okay. On the back, okay, give me a second here, okay, another four pointer, it says Mandy bought packs of trading cards that contain eight cards each. She gave away five cards. Let X equal the number of packs of trading cards. So it's kind of like X is packs of cards. Which expression shows the number of cards Mandy has left? We do not know how many packs she bought. We know she bought packs, but we don't know how many. So we know that each pack has eight cards in it. So eight cards times the amount of packs she bought. She gave away five of them. So in the end, she, she has eight cards times the packs, and then she gave away five. Okay? Leaves you with letter A. So that is packs, eight cards in each pack, and then got rid of five. Kind of hard. You got to pick and part it together, and you can highlight anything you want. Okay, some of this, guys, we just had to memorize it. These properties, you have to memorize. You should have them in your notes from last week. Um, starting out, number 18, it is yes that they are equal. If you worked it out, they'd be equal because of the associative. property of multiplication. Uh, last week, the kids had a chart with these in it. We talked about associative, the little, the parentheses are what's moving in associative property. It is multiplication because those are multiplication signs. It's who we associate with. We move around. Okay, the second one, and I think I said this wrong earlier, but n plus 8 is the same as 8 plus n. That is the commutative property. Or I was trying to say plus 1, but, um, or times 1. This is the commutative property
of addition, because it is addition, commutative just flip-flops. n plus 8 is the same as 8 plus n. Commutative property. And the last one is identity. Identity. These are equal. 13 times 1 is 13, and that is 13. So yes, they are equal because of the identity property of multiplication. I'll be honest, my videos are still out there from last week, filling out the charts on the properties. If you look back to maybe last Monday or Tuesday, they're still there. Okay. The next three, and those were four points each. These were also four points each, okay? Um, rewriting and simplifying the expression using, here was the key, distributive property. I'll tell you right now, some of you only distributed the first number. Listen, when you see a number up against a parenthesis, that means three times that number. So 3 times y is 3y, bring down the minus sign, and 3 times 2 is 6. A lot of you forgot to do that. You just brought down the minus 2. That is the answer for that one. Okay. The next one, 4 times 3d is 12d, bring down the plus sign, 4 times 12 is 48. Some of you just got the prop, like you did 4 times 12 and told me it was 36 or something. Okay. On this one, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2 times x is 2x. You can't forget that x. We don't know what x is yet, so we have to keep them. Okay, on the last part, simplifying algebraic expressions. These were also four points. Um, the key is to pick out the ones that are the same. Um, I was showing the kids last week, take something like 11D. 11D, it has a D with it. Well, its like term is 2D because it has a D also. So 11D minus 2D is 9D. And then I look at this. I have a positive 4 plus 6. Well, positive 4 plus 6, they go together because they're just what I call boring numbers. They go together. So that would be plus 10. That is all you're doing here. You are putting together the like terms. Okay. 25. On 25, you did have to use distributive property first. Okay. So 7 times 5x is 35x plus 7 times y is 7y plus 10x. Now, I look for like terms. Okay, I have a 35x plus 10x. Those two go together. That is 45x plus 7y. 7y had nothing it could go with, so it's just hanging out. And you can't forget it. If you leave it off, I have to count off points too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, on number 26, 8n minus n. Listen, we talked about this. If it's just an n, your brain has to think of it as minus 1n. So 8n minus 1n is 7n, and then bring down the plus 6, because he has no other friends to hang out with. You just bring him down. Okay. 7f goes with minus 6f. 7f minus 6f is just, some of you wrote 1f minus 11, and I let it go, but listen, we talked about 
The best answer is F minus 11. That's really the perfect answer I was looking for because 1 times F is F. So I'm begging you to drop the 1 in front of any variable. Okay. Now, for the next few days, I will also be maybe putting out some stuff that if you'd like to do some practice problems, if I can get it together. Please go through this and see what mistakes you have. You can also go through the review sheet that we did last Thursday. You got it back today. It was uh, 27 questions. You could go through that. And there's a video to check the review from last Thursday. Okay. Be studying. Next Monday is the retake in class. Next Monday. Uh, November, the retake is, I think, November the 19th. 19th? Yeah, today's Tuesday already, 13, 14. Yeah, the 19th, and we will do it in class. So no one has to come early because I have bus duty that week. Okay. Otherwise, this week I will be here if you need help. Be here starting at 7. Thank you, thank you. Come with questions. And work done with questions. Thank you.